Mr. Mr. Law, welcome back to the channel, baby. A man who goes by the name of Mr. Shippy has just climbed aboard. Richard, is that you? Johnny Depp? Shh. So we're going to be discussing this man's background and how he's going to help us reach Cytopia. We are also going to be talking about the genomics market and the future potential, as well as how far genomics has come and how we can disrupt the market. And is there going to be some magical funding coming our way in the years to come? If you're new around here, welcome to the channel. My name is Miguel and we look for the biggest, the juiciest growth stocks. And I believe BioNano Genomics is one of them. I've been accumulating shares when the market was down for the last two months. I was buying each week. We reached up into the $9 range in the last week or so. And then we've had a 5.75% drop today. But I'm not sweating. I'm actually excited because this gives me a chance to build out my position even further. So if you're new around here, sit back, relax. And remember, none of this is financial advice. It's for entertainment only. If you're able to support the channel, please click the join button above my head. It's only 99 cents a month. Thank you to everybody who sent donations by the way i received them via paypal via all different means via your channel memberships via patreon even you just commenting on this video means the world to me so if you're unable to join channel memberships just you hitting like and clicking subscribe on this video means the world thank you so much for your love and support so we're going to look into this fine and dandy young man mr shippy ship and why he's good for us to bring him on board so as you guys may already know they have appointed richard shippy as the chief business officer of bio nanogenomics what i like about this man is he has experience and he's proven himself in the world of genomics. Richard was one of the transformational leaders at Affymetrics who brought microarrays into the clinic and paved the way for the first FDA cleared application of microarrays in cytogenetics. So this was with the Cytoscan HD array developed by Affymetrix. And if we look up Affymetrix on Wikipedia, ooh, Affymetrix is a brand of DNA microarray products sold by Fermo Fisher Scientific. So it originated from the American Biotechnology Research and Development and Manufacturing Company company of the same name, Affymetrix. And if you see the bottom here, on January 8th, 2016, Fermo Fisher Scientific announced its acquisition of Affymetrix for $1.3 billion. So this company had something so desirable that Fermo Fisher decided to acquire the whole company so we could grab some of those DNA microarray products and actually generate income from this. So his main responsibilities will be leading product strategy, broadening its business into new markets and strategic expansion of product and technology portfolios at BioNano. Eric was saying that he's really happy to have Richard on board. He has a really strong, highly complementary skill set that he adds to the team as they put the pieces together of the puzzle so they can accelerate widespread global adoption of optical genome mapping with the Sapphire system. So this guy is going to help us get sales. He may be able to get us some approvals. One of the main things that Eric Homlin was saying that he knows about structural variation. So he knows the biological and clinical significance of these SVs. Now we're going to talk about structural variations as well just after this. And Richard has built his career around bringing the best possible technology for detecting structural variations for all sorts of applications and bringing them to market. So they believe that his experience at Affymetrix and Illumina give him the background research needed to help BioNano transform the cytogenetics market with optical genome mapping. This guy was also a co-founder of Cradle Genomics. So let's take a look at that company. I want to look at their revenues and how they've built out as well. So let's take a brief look and get into it. So Cradle Genomics, they focus mainly on prenatal testing. They're developing a new generation of clinical tests that will transform both prenatal care and women's reproductive health. First place I looked at was actually Crunchbase. We can see the total amount of funding they've received. I don't know how up to date these files are, but it says they received $23.1 million in funding. Here here it states they only have one to 10 employees. So I think this is a bit old. So Cradle Genomics is a biotech company. And one of the interesting things is I want to find out how much revenue they generated from scratch after they were founded. So they were founded 2018. I wanted to look across at Aula. So this is another website. They stated here that they actually have 17 employees and they've generated $1.2 million. However, there may be another source. So we jumped over to Zoom Info and I wanted to check how much was uh, Cradle Genomics most recent revenues. It says here that they've grown their employees to 27 and they're now generating $5 million in annual revenue. So between 2018 to 2021, they've now gone from zero to $5 million in revenue. And it may actually be bigger than we think because we can see on LinkedIn, they have 40 employees now. We are looking to get sales. We're looking to get global adoption for optical genome mapping for our Sapphire system. And we want to get in all the labs, all the clinics. I made a video recently here with 5,300 views in free 
three days that's pretty special but it was basically analyzing all the future predicted revenues and all these analysts that are super bullish on bingo are all predicting really bright futures and exponential growth for bingo over the next five to eight years so what can this man bring to the table eric homeland seems to believe a lot they believe that him being a co-founder of this cradle genomics and going from zero dollars to five million dollars in revenue from scratch it's giving him a little bit of that entrepreneurial experience so he understands the patient he understands the physicians and he understands the need for optical genome mapping and why it matters in patients lives this guy has a serious background in history he used to actually work for illumina for over five years nearly six years and before that affimetrics he's been in the game since 1999 so many professionals that have commented on his LinkedIn believe that he's an absolute pleasure. This guy is communication savvy. He's very smart and also very technical in his approach. We can see that presidents, directors, clinical genomic sales specialists, all of them believe that Richard has some super skills in the business and Richard is able to look at the cytogenetics community and understand their needs. Shippy feels that this is the best place for him to come to bio nanogenomics and have a machine that's potentially super disruptive. And this man has mentioned that structural variation are the drivers of biology and pathology in ways that are far more significant than single nucleotide variants. So he has searched his entire career to find a company like BioNanogenomics and what he believes is that BioNanogenomics alone are the ones that are most effective in analyzing structural variants and that sequencing, even long read sequencing, is not able to address structural variants either. Sorry Simon. So he believes in optical genome mapping and that it has the potential to transform the understanding of structural variants and the way in which they are analyzed in the clinic by providing a better solution that is substantially more efficient to use which can in turn improve patients lives so ultimately when you're working within the clinic you want to make sure that you're using the most up-to-date guidelines so if we can see over in south africa they're trying to build optical genome mapping into the guidelines if you want the best patient outcomes you need to follow the guidelines so now here is a tweet from eric green researchers have had great success using genomics to identify the genetic causes of rare diseases in 1990 scientists only knew the responsible gene for 61 rare diseases. Today, that number is over 5,600. Genomics is growing, and what they're understanding about the genomics is constantly evolving. There's actually a lot more curiosity surrounding structural variants, and I believe there may be a connection with Mr. Eric Lander, who's an American mathematician, but has had a massive impact on genomics. He's the big daddy. The Senate has confirmed Eric Lander to lead the White House Science Shop. So not only is he the Presidential Science Advisor and Director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy, this guy is driving the research he's a professor of biology professor of systems biology and he's based at harvard medical school and also the broad institute mit and harvard about a year ago there was this a structural variation reference for medical and population genetics all of these guys based out of harvard as you can see broad institute mit and harvard all of them based out of harvard they were studying structural variants and they said that svs rearrange large segments of dna and can have profound consequences in evolution and human disease they're actively studying structural variation and they believe that it will have broad utility in population genetics, disease association studies, and diagnostic screening. Could we potentially see some government funding coming in soon for bio-nanogenomics? Will they receive a grant? Will we see more government agencies adopt the Sapphire machine? The connections with Harvard are there. We can see Harvard Medical School researchers use optical genome mapping with Sapphire to uncover clinically relevant structural variations in genetic disease missed by array and next generation sequencing. This was on March 23rd, 2021 one they're consistently using the sapphire bio nanogenomics is building a world-class team and when they announced richard shippy is joining the company this was the reaction by the ceo hey rangers meet rich shippy he don't play bio nano's team is growing rich joins today as cbo it's going to be epic and as you can see the cowboys are in full swing the bingo rangers indifferent crayon said i'm your huckleberry lovely lovely editing and speaking of editing take a look at this work of art indifferent crayon has created this this is digital artwork diamond hands you can see here the bingo ape bingo space cowboy to the moon there diamond hands diamond hands are forever i swear this guy is super talented we call ourselves the bingo rillers bingo cowboys bingo rangers this guy is creating stickers soon and if you want to support him make sure you follow him on twitter as soon as they come out you could buy up the sticker and stick it anywhere you want so bio nanogenomics each week is showing that they're building a super team the last few weeks we've seen shippy come aboard we've also seen jason Pryor, who has taken companies from small stage companies to hundreds of millions in revenue juicy so all of these guys can actually see that they're surrounded by an incredible team of talented people 
and that structural variations are super important. Jason Pryor said, I've seen firsthand over the past two decades, two decades he's been watching, how important the timely and accurate identification of structural variations can be in people's lives, including for children. But too often I've seen the existing tools in cytogenomics fail to make an impact. And he believes that Sapphire with optical genome mapping is something that has the potential to disrupt healthcare by making structural variation analysis just as accessible and routine as next generation sequencing. If we take a look at the market as a whole, let's look at Grandview Research. They were stating that the genomics market size is worth 62.9 billion by 2028, with a compounded annual growth rate of 15.35%. They spoke about different applications. They spoke about different revenues you can make from using instruments, consumables. They also spoke about data. And one of the most interesting ones as well, these growing sectors, consumer genomics market. I remember when I was at the festival of genomics, they were stating that this is growing in America at the moment. People are curious. People have often mapped out, you know, their ancestry. So people are seeing like, I'm a quarter European, quarter African, this and that. Now people are getting interested to their genetic predisposition for disease. So how likely am I to get cancer? How likely am I to get, you know, diabetes? Do I have the gene for diabetes in my body? So Grandview Research has stated that this consumer genomics market was estimated about $1.9 billion in 2020, but it's expected to reach $2.4 billion in 2021. And it's then going to have a global growth rate, compounded annual growth rate of 19.4% from 2021 to 2028, reaching $8.1 billion by 2028. So people are willing to spend as consumers to find this kind of data out. Structural variation analysis is going to play a huge part, especially the people at Harvard believe it's going to have a broad utility in population genetics, disease association studies, and diagnostic screening. Imagine the prenatal and postnatal screening. What if that becomes routine? Imagine every single newborn that comes into the world, they're going to have a prenatal test they're going to have a postnatal test. Imagine that all that screening is going to cost smaller. And if we're the ones who can actually make sure we can see certain structural variations that others can't see, this machine having higher throughput, becoming improved all the time, we've got milestones set in place as well to bring out the Sapphire 2.0. When we bring out that new and improved machine, oh baby. So guys, in the meantime, I can't tell you to buy a stock. I can't tell you to sell a stock or even hold a stock. I can only tell you what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is each week I'm buying more bio nanogenomics. I'm buying more nano dimensions. I want to buy more Palantir because I have really high conviction in these companies and I can see how they're evolving as a business and what they can potentially do in the future. Please remember, none of this is financial advice is for entertainment only. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Drop me some comments below. Tell me your thoughts on BioNanogenomics, how it's playing out, what your strategy is and how many shares you want to build to have your full position if you've already created your full position. Let me know your thoughts and feelings as always and thank you so much for watching. If you're able to support the channel, please click the join button above my head. It's only nice. 99 cents but if you're unable to just you hitting like and click and subscribe on this video means the world to me and i'll catch you in the next video mr investor luck over and out baby